welcome you into the presence of the Most High God. This afternoon, we want to come before the Lord with thanksgiving, for He alone is worthy of all things. Oh, the Bible says you should come before His presence with thanksgiving and into His court with praise. This afternoon, He's worthy of all things. He's worthy of all praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. We want to give him all the praise because he's been our savior, our deliverer. Oh, we give him all the glory. Join us. for somebody. Let's 
intercesión. Aleluya. Praise the Lord. We want to thank God again for the opportunity to come your way again with me this spring. This is day number two. And we trust in God that He's been journeying with you well. We trust God that His goodness has not eluded you. Today we are looking at 1 Samuel chapter 2. And our interest will be basically on the prayer of Hannah and then we will look at a few things happening in the house of the Lord um, after that prayer and we'll be making some intercessions for, for the people of God and so our attention will be turned to 1 Samuel chapter 2 and we are looking at verse 1 and that is where the prayer of Hannah was the first 10 verses was Hannah's prayer of thanksgiving, her testimony to the Lord. Hallelujah. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiceth in the Lord. Then she said, My horn is exalted in the Lord. Now, let me give you some background quickly so you appreciate this one. So, Hannah, after that prayer that she made, went back to their home in Ephraim. And the Bible said that the Lord visited Hannah, and Hannah conceived. Everyone who sincerely goes to God in prayer, when your time is due, the Lord will honor your cry. The Lord will honor your prayer. Everyone who prayed yesterday that wombs should be opened, that wombs that are shut should be opened, I trust God for you. You too, you are coming to that day of your testimony. That you are coming to that day when doors that have been shut for ages will be opened because your soul poured out its pain and agony before the Lord. So Hannah came in the course of the time when Hannah was praying for that child to be given her, she vowed unto the Lord and said that if you give me a man child, if you give me a man child, if you give me a child, if you let me become pregnant and I get a child, I will bring that child back back to you. I want a boy and, and I will make sure that that boy shall be a Nazarite that, and Razor shall not touch his hair. He shall not drink any strong wine. I will give that child to you to serve in your house. Give me and I will give it back to you. So we remember in chapter 1 that Eli prayed and wished them well and then they went and the Lord visited them and she had a child. And so Hannah brought the child and brought the child to the house of God when she had finished winning the child off I mean, breast milk is that this boy is now old. He can be on his own. She brought Samuel to the house of the Lord and said, Eli, you remember me? I was that woman who came here praying and you said I was drunk and I told you I was not drunk. I, 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 I was that woman. The Lord has blessed me. He's given me a son and I made a vow to God. So I have brought the son that I would give the son to God. Then Eli received the boy and blessed Hannah. And then Hannah started to pray and to thank God. And that is that prayer. She said, and Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiceth in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. May your horn be exalted. No, you see, the horn being exalted means that God has given you strength for battle. Certain people have become weak in life. Let me tell you, life is battle, life is war. In this lifetime, Bible said that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood in our days, in this New Testament era. And certain people are weak. That is why the Apostle Paul, in that prayer, he said that, and having done all to stand, you, you don't battle and then by the time the battle is over, you are down and you have been knocked out. The killer and the blow man, they must all not die. One must die and one must stand. There. Hannah said, my horn is exalted. The horn, especially that of the unicorn, is their only weapon, offensive weapon. 
And when the horn is exalted, it means that God gave you strength. You go to battle and you are a conqueror. My horn is exalted. Everyone whose horn is bowed is broken. May God exalt your horn. But she said something else that I love. When she was praying and the story that we read, the understanding was that it was God who had shut her womb. And so she prayed to God that God opened my womb. No credit to the enemy. But when the results came and when the testimony came, now listen to a prayer. And this is where they, they now talk about the enemy. So they are very strategic where the enemy comes in their equation. When the problem is there, the enemy has no credit. God, I beseech you, you have closed this door. Open it for me. And when God opens the door, then he says, that enemy, you are ashamed. It is when the victory has come. Listen to this one. She said, my horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies. May God enlarge your mouth over your enemies. You will never become that kind of person that when you see your enemies, you bow down your head in shame because it looks like your God has disappointed you. It looks like they are asking that. The nations and the people around you are asking that. Where is her God? Where is his God? God will exalt your horn and God will enlarge your mouth over your enemies. May he do that for you in the name of Jesus. Then this is what he said. Because I rejoice in thy salvation. Hmm. Then verse 2, listen. There is none holy as the Lord. For there is none beside thee. And this is about the transcendence of God. That his holiness is a product of his transcendence. There is none holy like the Lord because there is none beside him. Only classmates. No one can be so pure, so separated. No one can be so separated from evil. Like God is separated from evil and filth and corruption. Because no one is beside him. They don't see anyone has having what it takes to contain God in any way. God does not have a classmate. In his ring, in his boxing ring, there is no competitor. When he's get to the football match, he doesn't have anyone he's playing against. He's alone. Because he does not have a classmate. And that is their understanding of the sovereignty of God in their lives. May God be so huge in your life that he will have no competitor in your life. Let there be none, none, that your eyes and your imagination can conceive to be strong enough to battle your God. It is not true. It is falsehood. There is none beside him. Neither is there any rock like our God. Then listen to what he told the enemies. Next time. Don't talk so exceedingly proudly. So when the enemy was talking, she was hearing. But she never considered the enemy as anything in her prayer. Now that God, she gave God the glory. Now that she placed God number one and without a classmate, she said that the enemies now, listen, talk no more exceedingly proudly. Let no arrogancy come out of your mouth again. For the Lord God is a God of knowledge. And by him, actions are weighed. The bow of the mountain are broken. So she knew all that. That there were people fighting her. But she didn't pay attention to them. Now that the victory has come, she knew how to deal with them. May we learn from these people. Then he said, the bows of the mighty are broken and they are stumbled and girded with strength. And they that stumbled are girded with strength. They that were full have hired out of self of bread. And they that were hungry, and they that were hungry ceased, so that the barren had born seven. May every barrenness in your life give way for sevenfold fruitfulness. And she had many children that is wax feeble. Now listen to what she said. The Lord killeth, and the Lord maketh alive. That is why they will not even allow any enemy to take credit for anyone who has died. It is the Lord that kills and it is the Lord that makes alive. Jesus. He bringeth down to the grave and he bringeth up. It is the Lord. The Lord maketh poor. It is not the enemy. And it is the Lord that maketh rich. He bringeth low and he lifted up. He raised up the poor out of the dust. 
and lifted up the beggar from the dung hill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the laws and he has set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness for by strength shall no man prevail for by strength shall no man prevail no man shall be able to prevail by his own strength no man by reason of what he knows and by reason of his experience and by reason of his strength and by reason of his knowledge and understanding can prevail in anything for by might shall no man prevail then he says the adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces out of heaven shall he thunder upon them the Lord shall judge the ends of the earth. He shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointing. May the Lord exalt your horn. You see, this is her testimony. But her testimony came out of a test. She has gone through pain. She has gone through agony. She said to Eli, I'm a man, a woman, bitter soul. My soul is bitter. I'm a woman who has known sorrow and pain. And I am here to pour out my heart. But the Lord who shut her womb and gave her that test has used her prayer to bring her a testimony. As great as your test may be, may your testimony be greater in the name of Jesus. For Bible tells us that the, the pains and, and, the, and, the, and the sufferings of this present time cannot be compared to the glory that is about to be revealed because the things that we are going through the pains they are working for us a far greater and exceeding weight of glory in the future whatever you are going through today as a child of God know it the other time the Lord was telling the children of Israel even when I am punishing you my punishment will work for your good it will work for your good the Lord shut a womb so that the Lord will give her a testimony if the Lord has shut any womb in your life, may your testimony come forth in the name of Jesus. This is that prophecy. Now, for our prayer today, we want to make some intercessions for the people of God, for servants of God in his house. You see, the second part of the first Samuel chapter 2, talks about what was prevailing in the house of God and the focus was on the house of Eli we are going to pray for ministers of God in this church we want to lift up a cry unto God for them and as we pray we'll be praying that God shall give them grace listen to what the Bible said in verse 12 of first Samuel chapter 2 it says now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. The high priest of Israel, his sons were described as the sons of Belial that they knew not the Lord. How could the high priest know God but his sons, they knew not the Lord. And it is not as if something was prevailing in Israel and something was prevailing in the house that made it so difficult for them not to know the Lord because around the same time that we were told that they knew not the Lord, verse 18 says, but somewhere ministered before the Lord. The sons of Eli were sons of Belial, but somewhere ministered before the Lord. No matter how tough and difficult the environment may be, those who fear God can still live their lives and honor God. And we'll be praying that God will have mercy on them. Then the Bible said something in verse 20. And Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife and said, The Lord give the seed of this woman for the loan which he lent to the Lord. And they went into their own home and the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. And the child somewhere grew before the Lord. Listen to something else. When Hannah brought the child to Eli, to the house of God, and, and told Eli that I made the vow that I'm giving this child, Eli was like, really? How can a barren woman who has now gotten her womb open, having only one son, still be courageous enough to release all and give it to God? 
if you can trust God and bring your only begotten, then may God reward you for what you have learned to him. The Bible said that God decided that if you, you can give me one, then I'll give you five. The fact that Hannah proved to God that I, I, I don't love anything more than you. I, I love you more than this boy Samuel. I love Samuel, but I love you more than I'm ready to relinquish Samuel to you. God said, then I'm also willing to give you more than you can carry. May we receive that grace to love God more than anything else in our lives. But we are going to rise to our feet and begin to pray right now. And we are just going to ask God that everyone, we begin this prayer and we are saying that may God exalt the horn of every one of his children that anyone that you are in any kind of battle in this life, as God, as God, your God is alive, may he raise your horn and may he enlarge your mouth against your enemies. May you never bow your head in their presence. May God cause you to open your mouth wide against oh, yeah. them in the oh, name of Jesus. Yeah. Lift up your voice that Lord, exalt my horn, exalt my horn. Exalt my horn and open and enlarge my mouth. Exalt my horn and enlarge my mouth. Exalt my horn and enlarge my mouth. Exalt my horn and enlarge my mouth. In the name of Jesus. Now, her testimony came because she saw God as a God that had no competitor. Amen. There is none holy like you. There is none beside you. None. You want to pray that, Father, give me give grace. Me. That I will see none beside you. Yes. And, I, and I will follow none beside you. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Father, grant that grace, grant that grace that we shall see no other God. We shall see no other God. There is none beside you. There is none beside you. My wound is shut, but there is none beside you. I don't have children, but there is none beside you. I don't have a job, but there is none beside you. I have no money in my pocket, but there is none beside you. My prayer has to be answered, but there is none beside you. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Now this prayer we are praying, we are praying for every, every servant of God, every handmaiden of God. Pray for your children. You will not be a woman of God. You will not be a man of God for your children to be sons of Belial. It will never happen. Whatever the enemy is planning Jesus. against your family. To discredit your person and to discredit your ministry. 
We are praying in the name of Jesus mm. that may God deliver them from evil. Amen. May God deliver them from evil. Deliver may God us. keep deliver them in the way. May God keep, keep us, them in the way. In the name of Jesus. Deliver our sons shall not be sons and children of Belial. Our children shall not be children of Belial. In the name of Jesus. 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 The Bible said that Hannah gave one Samuel. She got five back. We are going to pray that, Father, for every sacrifice that your people have made in your house, let it count. Let it count. Let it count. Let the world see it. Father, let it count. They have sacrificed. They have released their Samuels. Father, let it count. Five in return for one. In the name of Jesus. A hundred thousand fold. A hundred thousand fold. It is a hundred thousand fold. It is a hundred thousand fold. In the name of Jesus. Father, let it count. For every sacrifice and for every pain. For every sacrifice. For every someone that has been released. Let it count. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For we trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. We trust you. we have an uncle that keeps the soul that fastens your heart. We have a tongue that keeps the soul that Family, our children, we have an uncle. Hey, that is our hey, handle the mini so that I am done. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We want to thank God for your life. And we are trusting God that he is raising your horn and enlarging your mouth. And for every Samuel that you have released to the Lord, that he shall give you fivefold. A hundred thousand times. Amen. May it be your portion. And may God give you grace to continue waiting in his presence. Until we come your way, same time tomorrow, Amen. same Se channel, on midday springs, God richly bless you. Amen. Amen.